Hey guys and welcome back. So today we are making sauerkraut. So to get started you are going to get a cabbage, clean off the outside layer of the cabbage, take a second layer off and that is what you're going to use once you've finished putting all the stuffing of the cabbage inside the jars. You're going to put that on top to make sure that all the cabbage is underneath the liquid. Then you're going to get a scale, get a large bowl, put it on top of the scale, press tear so the scale sets back to zero grams so it doesn't weigh the bowl as well. Then you're going to cut up the cabbage and put it into the bowl and see how many grams all your cabbage is combined. Because my cabbage is quite large, I ended up using two bowls and then I just added both of them together to find out what the total of my cabbage was in grams. When cutting your cabbage, make sure that you're slicing the pieces as small as they can be. Now while you're cutting up your cabbage, I would recommend to grab a large pot, fill it with water, put it on high heat with the lid on and allow this to start heating up. And then you're going to place the pieces of cabbage inside the bowl. So I just put the bowl onto the scale, I just press tear and now I'm filling the bowl with the cabbage that I just cut. And now you're just watching me weigh the second bowl as well as it didn't fit in the first one. So what I did is I wrote out both the two measurements of the cabbage and it came to a total of 270.7 grams. Now it doesn't matter what your total comes to, whatever amount of grams of cabbage that you have, you're going to times it by 2%. So in my case, I did 270.7 grams times it by 0.02 and that gave me my total of the amount of salt. So now I'm weighing up my salt and my salt came to 4.40 grams. So now you're measuring out your salt. If it does go a bit over, it doesn't matter. Just make sure it doesn't go under. It's better you're having more salt than less because this is what's going to help your food ferment and preserve as well as not go off. So if you added a bit more salt, don't worry about it. Now I'm just going to get the large bowl I have in my kitchen. I'm going to put all my cabbage in the bowl and then I'm going to add the salt to the cabbage. And I'm going to squish it in between all the cabbage, make sure that it's well mixed into everything. And I'm making sure that I well distribute all the salt throughout all the cabbage, leaving none of my hands nor at the bottom of the bowl. Just making sure that's evenly coated all the cabbage. Now we're going to return to the pot that you put on previously to start boiling and hopefully it is bubbling. That shows that it's ready. So now we're going to start sterilizing our jars. I use six jars but I do recommend sterilizing more especially if it's your first time and you're not sure how much will fit into your jars. For me, I actually did two batches. I think I sterilized all up about 12 jars, but I only ended up needing six of them. And I wasn't sure if I was going to preserve any other food that I had. So I just thought it's better to do more than less since the water's already boiling. So here I'm just putting in my jars into the pot. I put the lids with it. That was a mistake. It's better just to put in all your jars, make sure they're all submerged under the water. And then once you've filled them all up, then you can put the lids in after because the lids will take up room to make it harder for you to be able to put in your jars properly to fit them all. Then I left all the jars. Once I've got them all in there, I put a 10 minute timer on and I left them to boil. So this is sterilizing them, getting rid of any germs that could be in the jar because you're fermenting food in the jar. It is best to do this because you made sure that you've killed everything on them and that you won't end up having any problems with mold later. So once I've done that, I just had a wooden board out. Make sure you don't put hot glass onto a cold surface. It will break straight away. So I just put them onto my wooden board and I remove them all slowly one by one. Now I'm just going back in and sterilizing my second lot of jars. Then you have to wait until your jars cool down and reach room temperature and then you can start stuffing your jars. Now make sure your hands have been washed and they're clean as you're going to be picking up the cabbage with your hands and putting them into the jars. So you're going to start by just gently filling them 
And then as you start getting closer and closer to the top, you're going to start squishing in the cabbage to fill the jar fully, making sure you're not leaving any holes in the jar. So once you've filled all your jars up, now you're going to get bottled water and you're going to fill each jar right to the top. Now this is the part I forgot to video. I will place a small photo if I can in one of the corners so I can show you guys what I mean by this. But you're going to get that piece of cabbage, that layer that you kept to the side before you started cutting your cabbage up. And you're going to use that kind of like a cap. So you're going to cut it into pieces, making sure that it's big enough that when you put it into the jar, you're going to push it right down, making sure the juice actually covers that layer of cabbage that you put on there. So by doing this, what you're doing is you're making sure you keep all your small pieces of sauerkraut, or that's what it's going to turn into, down, making sure that none of it gets above the juice. Because if it does, it will start molding or creating weird smells, and we don't want that. So by using that method, I've seen so many other videos of people how they've, you know, they've bought things to do this. I've also tried it without doing it. It just was a bit more high maintenance because I had to sit on top of it all the time. And there's just a high risk that if you forget about your sauerkraut, that it will go off. So I do recommend doing that. If you didn't, it doesn't matter because I have done that before. Just make sure, especially now that you're a beginner, every single day I recommend to check on your sauerkraut. And what I mean by this is that you're going to open the lid. You're going to make sure that you push down the sauerkraut if it needs to be pushed down. Top it up with water and then put the lid back on. Now, I recommend not closing the lid fully. If you do this, because obviously the cabbage is fermenting, it will, it could explode. It will create basically like this chemical reaction where it will build up a lot of pressure. So I just gently place the lids on top. I did do one of them a bit tight when I closed it the first time and I did feel that pressure and it also had like a ch like when you're opening up a soft drink sound. So I just recommend you don't do that. And now you can just leave it in a spot in your kitchen where there's not a lot of sunlight hitting directly on it. And you'll leave it there for two to three weeks. And once you've hit two to three weeks, you'll put it in the fridge and it's ready to eat. Don't be scared if some weird smells do come from your jar. I will make a video on what healthy fermenting will look like so you guys don't freak out if you see any white layering on top of your jars during this stage of fermenting. When I first started making sauerkraut, I did try it each week because obviously it's not dangerous, you can try it, it just won't taste like sauerkraut yet. It won't have fermented enough to have that sauerkraut taste. But I did that just to trial how long it actually takes. If it does reach three weeks, I recommend trialing it before you go put it in the fridge because it might not be ready. Um, most cases I have had when I've tried to make sauerkraut, it is ready at three weeks. But that's just a recommendation just make sure you get the full enjoyment of your sauerkraut that's it guys hope you enjoyed this video see you in the next one bye